Good evening, everybody. We appreciate uh, the couple who are here tonight and also those who are joining us online. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order, and uh, board members are reminded that it is our duty to avoid conflicts of interest and the appearance of conflicts of interest as we handle the work of this board. Does any member of the board know of any conflict of interest or any appearance of conflict with respect to any matters coming before us at this meeting? If so, state them for the record. If during the course of the meeting you become aware of an actual or apparent conflict of interest, please bring the matter to the attention of the chair. It will then be your duty to abstain from participating in discussion on the matter and from voting on the matter. Okay. Pat, would you do our invocation, please? Yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of a new year. There's something about a, be a new beginning and things that give us a hope that things in the future are going to be better than the things in the past. And my hope for this year and my prayer is that we'll find peace, peace in our nation, peace in our world, peace in our community, and not just the peace that's an absence of conflict, but the peace that's in our hearts, the peace that you give, the peace that pa passes all understanding, peace that gets us through the challenges of the pandemic, peace that uh, help us deal with decisions that leaders make that we don't really, dis that we really agree with. Uh, and when the world seems out of control, we need your peace to know that it's just out of our control, but it's not out of your control. And we know that your word promises us that you, uh, you will make all things work together for good for us. So in this new year, I pray that you will give us peace with the decisions we make, that you'll help us to glorify you in all that we do. And I pray this in the name of the Prince of Peace. Amen. 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 Thank you. We stand adjourned. That was good. <laughs> good. That's good. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could I have a motion for approval of tonight's open and closed agendas? I make a motion. Thank you, Kathy. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Jane. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. We'll move on to our superintendent's report. Yeah, yes, Dr. Dr. Brickman. Happy board. New Year, Happy everybody. Happy New Year to each of you all. <laughs> yes, and wait, we welcome 2021. Uh, and we opened up the school year with a bunch of snow. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a beautiful time on the mountain. So we're fortunate to see 2021. As a result of the snowstorm and hazardous travel conditions, we implemented remote learning days today and yesterday. In-class instruction is scheduled to resume th uh, this Thursday, January 14, 2021. And we greatly appreciate all the patience and flexibility from our students and our parents and our teachers as we continue to deal with the winter season and day-to-day uh, -day decisions that have to be made. And of course, exams begin tomorrow for first semester to conclude the first semester for our high school students. And we will continue with makeups until all exams are completed. There will be a schedule that's accessible via social media and the high school's website outlining the schedule for the high school exams on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. We're going to change the day's schedule and we'll be running buses for those high school students who will be involved in the biology and the math three and of course exams. Thursday we will continue with EOCs with math one and English two on Thursday and then Friday we'll wrap up the first semester exams with our career and technical exams on Friday January 15th which shouldn't take long. We're expecting more snow on January 15th that is this Friday so stand by for additional announcements on Friday regarding the afternoon's activities. COVID-19 uh, is still alive and well in our county as we're addressing the pandemic and uh, we're working in partnership with our health department to try to monitor the number of uh, COVID cases in the county and in our school system and respond accordingly to try to ensure the safety and the well-being of all of our students and staff and control the spread of the virus. On January 15th, we will, that was this Friday, we'll conclude first semester and January 18th, which is next Monday, will be a holiday with no school for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. 
And on January 19th, we'll start second semester and the third nine weeks grading period, and the year is swiftly passing by. February 9th will be our next regular meeting of the Board of Education at 6 o'clock p.m. here. And it is budget planning season once again, and we're getting into the budget development process, and we'll start with capital outlay planning. Within the next few weeks, we'll meet with administrators and talk about facility needs at each campus. And we are anticipating next year's projected state allotments to be handed down from the state sometime in February. Mr. James just got that update today. We will plan for budget work sessions with this Board of Education as in early March with the anticipation of the final approval of our draft budget by the end of the April or, or by the April board meeting. We must submit our, can our budget to the county by May 15th. So that's, that's the conclusion of our timeline for budget development. <laughs> Today is a very special day for the students, parents, and bus drivers within the Avery County School System. I had the pleasure to go out and observe a new system that's installed on two of our buses. The first bus has received the installation of a system called Predictive Stop Arms. The Predictive Stop Arm system is by Sion Safe Fleet. This is a very effective system that uses radar and a loud external speaker or intercom to warn students of oncoming vehicle, vehicles, both in the rear and in the front, that, that are anticipated to run the stop arm. So this system could actually save lives uh, for kids that may cross the road and have a, a motorist run by a school bus. We are the first school system in the state of North Carolina participating in this pilot program. New technology for us. This is very new technology for us in the state of North Carolina. The cost of these units are about $2,199 a piece. A special thank you goes out to Mr. Danny Reed, our DPI field consultant, for his time and support with our system being approved for this pilot. I would like to arrange a demonstration for the board at the beginning of next month's regular meeting so you can go out in the parking lot and see uh, basically the demonstration of the truck coming towards the bus and the alarm going off and the voice actuator going saying do not cross, stop, do not cross. So it's a very impressive system and again we're trying to emphasize student safety from the buses to the cafeterias and this is a major step in the right direction for us. So we're excited. That concludes the superintendent's update. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Brigham. Yes, it is exciting. Yes. Uh, we'll move on to our 21st <coughs> century <coughs> systems. And uh, we didn't have any public comment. I don't know. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we have four policies for first reading. Anything particular that you've noticed before we uh, no, take so those? In particular, the, the policy changes are in bold yellow. And um, if you have any questions regarding the first reading, of those policies will remain available if you have questions between now and next meeting. Okay. Thank you. And then we have um, six policies for second reading, which we we'll need to take action on that we covered from last meeting. Any questions on those? Or, Dr. Brigham, do you need to say sir. anything to us on no, any of those? We board have a chance to look at those. But, okay. I recommend the board approve them as presented, and our legal counsel has vetted these and recommends approval. Okay. 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 All right, thank you. Could I have a motion for approval of the policies for second reading? I make a motion to thank approve them. Thank you, Kathy. Second? I second. Thank you, Pat. Any further discussion, questions? All in favor? Uh -huh. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Rob Johnson to bring us an update on Avery County High School construction project. Welcome, Ron. Happy New Year. Yeah, good, good evening. It's great to be here. Happy New Year. Wow, I visited the school today. The report I sent, I hope it made sense. Um, that was from Nuts colleague Peter was here last Thursday and I enjoyed a walk through this afternoon. Um, quite a bit of activity going on with the subs. Uh, the trades there were um, mechanical, a lot going on. Sprinkler running fire alarm, excuse me, uh, fire protection, automatic sprinkler piping. The electricians are there and the masons are working the interior. So, um, first floor is in really good shape. Upstairs, you know, the structural deck's there, but the roofers are literally waiting in the wings to come, and then they'll, and the blocking's there. The next assembly is insulation, and then the pitch roof is metal, but we had already specified a um, ice and water shield membrane. So once that gets on, that can be fine, and there's no critical nature for the metal to get on. The metal can be applied. 
had more leisure. So that's for the, the main pitch roofs. On the low slope roofs, it's a bituminous uh, single ply, if you will. All those materials are actually being stored in the old chiller room, now electrical room, so they stay warm. From what I gather, the sub, roofing sub is out of Greenville, South Carolina. But the foreman evidently lives between here and Asheville. So that's the thing they've got to focus on the most is to get the roof of there. But I was really pleased with the activity level inside the building today. Very grateful that parking lot out there. So um, those are kind of my key observations from this afternoon. New driveway, temporary driveway is installed. Yeah, I did and a loop around the back. Seems to be flowing yeah. without any major issues. Yeah. On school since Christmas break. They worked over break a yeah. lot. <laughs> you, know, it's, it's and, you know, the windows, wow, if you can really visualize it, and there's a few more to do, but then at least with the frames there, they'll again be able to um, get temporary enclosure. And so uh, they've done a good job of keeping the plywood doors downstairs. It's amazing that, you know, kind of an insurance flat, there's a lot of wind in there. When you <laughs> close up the hole, it doesn't let the wind blow through. So um, anyway, we're. Looking forward to our next progress meeting with them on Thursday. So, we're just proceeding on. Still pretty much confident on our March system startup. You know, the yeah. remainder of the dates on, you know, the really nice boy. Finally, my first page got all complete, <laughs> so on the back now, the, um, the dates. I think there's a lot of mechanical work that had been done along the way, so I'm, I won't jinx this, but I think those are in, in really good shape for um, coming online. Uh, and you probably don't know this off the top of your head, Ron, but you might, uh, the, uh, the drop dead date, or what your projected date, I guess I'll say, for completion until... That, that's why I put the, those notes are there in the report. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. July 13th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Second block up from the bottom on the second page. Substantial completion mm -hmm. inspections, 4.30 through 5.13. Mm -hmm. the CO. Okay. Okay. We appreciate oh, yeah. the updates. Yeah. Thanks for I'll say a personal note too. Our family had the most wonderful white Christmas here in April. Oh, <laughs> we all did great. It was, wasn't it? It was magical. And mm -hmm. being the proud pup I am, we had three children. We had three spouses or significant others, three grandchildren. Three dogs and a cat. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Great time for three days. <laughs> and are y'all still speaking to each other? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Uh, happy New Year. Thank you. 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 Good evening. Good, good evening, Good Jeff. Happy New Year to you, too. Happy New Year. So, um, capital outlay report, maintenance update. Uh, there's really no change in the project list from uh, last month. As I told you we've kind of been a lull with our capital. We've got the majority of it completed, and uh, what's on tap uh, will be done uh, later in the spring, early in the summer, with the uh, fuel tank replacement that we be done here at the bus garage. Um, you know, there's some central office improvements uh, and those are pretty much just rainy days, snowy day projects as we have time. We're going, those are you know bottom of the list. Uh, we'll take care of maintenance requests out in the schools before we'll take time to finish the storage, put the roof back on the storage building and things. So, so schools take priority over uh, our department. Um, You'll see at the bottom of the report, uh, I did give you an update of where we are for our maintenance request. Um, you know, on a positive note, um, the guys were able to close more requests than actually came in. So uh, you know, things that have been outstanding, uh, they were able to catch up on, on several requests. Uh, as of uh, when we turned the new year, there were only 38 work orders left open. Um, so, and you know, and I know we're 12 days into January, and so there's a lot that's occurred over those 12 days. You know, I'm trying to be consistent with the reporting and do it month to month rather than, you know, one month it might be 
12 days in, one month might be six days in, so I'm just trying to stay consistent. Um, so uh, that's that report. Okay. Thank and if there's any questions, I did, I did check with um, Mountain Heritage, uh, the element or new element intercom system they are presently working on, they just haven't completed it yet. And Jason Farrell was going to send me a report that he didn't, he was out of the office today and wasn't able to finish it before the meeting. Uh, to give me an idea of a completion date, but um, that's really uh, the only contracted uh, item on the list that's still up in the air. Uh, then one other thing, it's not on this report because it's technically not part of our budget, but it is a capital project. Um, we discussed several several months ago uh, that the Sheriff's Department had written a safety grant to uh, install camera systems and that kind of got placed on hold due to COVID. We went ahead and in this budget cycle we appropriated money to begin those projects and um, with the ability to expand if the money ever comes through, well the money did come through and over Christmas Newland and Freedom Trails systems were completed. So our part was done and now they, the the scalability and the, and the scope of those camera systems have now been doubled uh, with the uh, Sheriff's Department money and Avery Middles is set to be completed as well and I, that was one of the other things that Jason was going to give me an update on but I, he wasn't able to complete that before. So just to give you that's a positive note. So, um, and so Middleton Elementary System was completely uh, uh, replaced and Cranberries was doubled and Avery Middles was Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, I keep looking over this and I see something else I, I wanted to mention too. Uh, the gym floors, um, over Christmas break, the custodial staff was able to complete two more floors. You know, I think when we talked early in the year about how we were actually going to take that project upon ourselves rather than contracting it out, and we for the price that we were paying the contractor to do uh, the high school and one of the middle schools, we felt like we could complete all the schools. So um, we've actually have refinished every floor except for Van Earl. Wow. And uh, so that one's next. And um, they look great. Some of y'all have actually been out on some of the floors. I mean, they are, for the first time for them doing it, they look fabulous. And, every, and this time around, it, they said it was so much easier to do these two than it was the first three. And these look even better than the first ones. So by the time they get uh, done with Banner Elks and we get into next year's cycle, their gym floors will be the gym, best gym floors in the state. So I'm excited about that. I won't give props to the custodial staff. They have, they have went above and beyond to do that. Jeff, how much that say? I mean, that saved a great amount of money, right? And helped the custodial staff? It does. Uh, we budget, we typically were budgeting around $10,000 a year to do two floors. Mm -hmm. And for the same amount of money, we can do all of them. Yeah. And our custodians are doing it. And they do get paid a stipend but, uh, and to do that. that because it is weekend work. It's mm -hmm. not in their 40 hour week. So they get above and beyond pay to, to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah, yes. All right, Jeff, while you're up here, we'll go, move on to uh, our budget amendments. Um, budget amendments. This one's fairly lengthy. Um, as far as the number of pages, I'll try to make it uh, as painless and short and sweet as possible. Uh, but please stop me at any time and ask questions. Um, budget amendment number three uh, will increase our total budget $146,602.25. The majority of that is going to be in state funds. So um, looking at our state funds, you know, we won't go through every single program, but um, I'm going out of order, I apologize. Um, but with our state funding, uh, the majority of the changes, you will see that there are reductions, small reductions, $131 here, $126, $800. That is our charter school and virtual public school reduction. 
that typically comes after the third month of school uh, when the state has collected all of the information across the state and then they come in, you know, there's an ADM reversion, there then is a charter school reversion. So uh, that's how much money we lost in our allotment due to charter school growth. Uh, it wasn't that much, um, but it is there, we have to account for it. Uh, the big changes, uh, PRC 48, which is principal bonuses, uh, the principals uh, were entitled to receive state bonuses this year, and basically because of COVID, if you got if you was a principal last year and you got a bonus, you got the same bonus this year. So, sorry, Miss Shirley, you retired one year early. Um, Should have hung on there. <laughs> and then, um, what you will see, the, the the other big change in our state budget. Um, is PRC 132, which is a COVID account. Uh, we actually received right toward the end of November an additional $39,000 in our uh, EC COVID fund that supposedly had to be spent by the end of December, but then they changed all that. Uh, and then the other one was at the end of November, we received $80,000 for PPE uh, for COVID. So that that's the accounts that receive money that is increasing our total budget. So, um, and then all the other items on the state budget, and the, I've broken them out, it's program by program, and it will tell you here's how much money we're adding or how much money we're removing. You'll see that with our COVID funds, I have made adjustments for actual expenditures. And uh, several months ago, when we first brought to you the budget amendment to include our COVID money, I made the statement to you that we will not be able to spend all this money mm -hmm. and we will have to send it back to the state. Mm -hmm. And I told you if I'm wrong, I'll tell you. Well, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And as of today, we have spent all of it at $808. And I will be getting with Mr. Reed and we will spend that by two more iPads <laughs> and it will be gone. But thankfully, at the 11th hour, the state board passed a policy allowing us the ability to move the COVID money within funds. So that if you could not spend all of your COVID money that was allotted for summer school, you could move the balance to student computers and buy more computers. And that's exactly what we did. We, uh, uh, the administration sat down, we looked at our options, and we left here on December the 18th with $100 remaining. Uh, and then while we were on Christmas break, and with the, with the expectation that the funds expired December 30th. Um, but when Congress reenacted the second COVID bill. The funds were extended. So, because I thought, well, we're going home and there's going to be about $800 that we're going to give back. Thankfully, they have extended it. So we'll spend that $800 before June 30th. So does that make sense? Yes. Does that explain Thank the state you. amendment? Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Uh, the federal amendment is uh, $3,006. And that is PRC 17, which is the CTE budget. Um, since we did our planning budget back in June, the feds have added $3,000. So uh, Mr. Ayers and I sat down uh, this week, made our adjustments, uh, submitted the paperwork to DPI. We got the approval yesterday, so it is official. Uh, they did approve the amendment, so this is the official amendment that goes before the board, uh, adding that money. And then the last one, fund eight, which is the last page of your amendment packet, we will be adding $16,850 to our local budget. It's coming to us from two separate funding sources. One is Skyline provided us $3,500 in the donation to go toward our athletic program. And so uh, it was to be used for any purpose within athletics. Uh, the monies were divided between the three schools. 
Uh, both middle schools received $875, the high school received $1,750. So we're just adding that money to the budget so that the, high, the schools can receive their allocation and put it in their athletic accounts, um, which will be most useful considering that their gate receipts this year will be non-existent. Mm -hmm. right? The second one is uh, we had a donor uh, that came to us back uh, sometime toward the end of September, early October, and said that they were getting together a large sum of money uh, that they wanted to go out to teachers as operation classroom supplies or operation school supplies. Um, at the, when we received the final check from them uh, at the middle of November, that brought our total to thirteen thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Is how much that donation was. I will be sending every teacher, and the stipulation was it has to be a teacher. Every teacher in our county, one hundred seventy-three teachers, officially on payroll. They'll each receive an email tomorrow, uh, telling them that they now have seventy-seven dollars that they will be reimbursed. <coughs> God uh, bless you. Me, thank you. If they go out, all they have to do is go out, buy their supplies, submit their receipt, and we'll reimburse them up to seventy-seven dollars. I've created a Google form uh, to try to eliminate a lot of the paperwork that is involved with finance. Rather than making them go through our normal reimbursement process and fill out the voucher in the email, they'll have the Google form. They tell us their name, their school, the amount, and upload a picture of the receipt. And we'll process it and reimburse it. So, so that will bring our total budget um, after approval to $41,842,597.26. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Any questions at all? No. Can I have oh, a thank you. So can I have a motion for approval of uh, the budget amendment? I'll make that we approve it. Thank you, Jane. Second? Second. Thank you, Pat. No other questions or comments? Could I? Uh, uh, all in favor? Uh -huh. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate that. So while you're up, we'll move <laughs> on to our, uh, to next year's calendar proposals. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. As you all know, the calendars have been very challenging to to maintain a school calendar under the current circumstances and we have been in, we have been presented with a unique calendar this year as a result of covid with the allowance of remote learning days at first we were required to build in five with an additional five built in our calendar taking our school calendar up to 190 days total for the present school year uh, we are on a four by one block uh, schedule with the Wednesdays being remote learning for deep cleaning and PLCs and other activities in the schools, parent conferencing. So given the unknown of what lies ahead at the state level with a new state superintendent and the General Assembly, we anticipate there's going to be some changes to the calendar laws and the restoration of some pre-existing requirements. So. Um, Keep in mind, this is probably going to be a document that's a work in progress up until late spring. So with that said, Mr. James has already done a lot of work with our committee to try to create two calendars, and I commend Ms. Edwards. She had an idea of looking at a 180 calendar, and we've also developed a 185, 185-day calendar. So with that said, Mr. James, thank you for your work on the calendar and the survey days. So um, what we provided to you in your packet, I, I went back and I double checked the committee comments and survey uh, to make sure that had anybody posted anything after the official deadline, and they had. So I went ahead and reprinted the survey. It really didn't change the outcome of the survey. It's still 75%, um, you know, down through it. You know, so the majority uh, still rules. Um, so with that, what we did is um, we built a standard calendar trying to adhere to the wishes of the majority. And, um, and ultimately, if you've ever worked through the calendar process, it boils down to uh, three basic things. 
how long do you want Christmas break to be? Do you want a spring break? And when would you, you know, when do you want your holidays? Because the state tells us this is the earliest or this is the day that you start school. This is the latest you can go to school. And this is how many days you can put it in. You know, this is the number of green days, the number of yellow days, the number of red days. And you just kind of place them where you can. So uh, with that, the only thing that we were not able to actually do that the committee, the majority requested, was when Christmas break would begin. So Jeff, if you look I, at, I'm yeah. sorry, can I stop you just for a second? The responses, are those just from committee members? That's just the committee members. Yeah. The committee members were to go out to their schools, to the parents, and get the information and then bring it back as a collective rather than, you know, because we have no way of surveying all parents. We have no way of, you know, we can survey staff. Uh, with a Google form, but surveying all parents is a very difficult uh, task. We don't have a mechanism. We could do it through a Google form, but unless they have a Google account, mm -hmm. they can't access it. Unless they have internet access, they can't access it. So what we do, we when we bring in the committee, the committee consists of a parent rep and a staff rep of every school. And then those reps, you know, typically in a non-COVID year, they would have a meeting at the school, whether it's a, a you know a parent night. Uh, they would have faculty meetings, and they would discuss it as a group. This year, the committee members utilized Facebook. Uh, they had their email chains. They did actually talk at the pickup line at school. You know, so they the, we relied on the committee members to go out to the individuals within the communities to ask. These are, these are the questions that we need. What do you think? What's your response? And so then the committee members then went to the Google form and uploaded the collective responses based on. And then whatever the majority of that particular. That majority that, of that particular that's community. That's got the vote. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know if there was much participation from the. I, the, the, the ones that I have, I spoke to directly, um, the staff members, they did have a faculty meeting where they discussed it as a group. I did talk to one um, of the committee members that said she spoke to individuals at church. She did, she put it on Facebook and then she actually called several of the parents that she works with closely uh, with the PTO and the, the what, what we call a booster. It's not at an elementary school, it's a booster. But. Yeah. What kind of feedback did you get from the calendars when you sent the calendars back to the committees? Did they give you some response uh, to the calendars? I haven't no, received any feed, negative feedback or positive. So that they've seen the calendars and shared them with their schools? I'd have to go back and double check that to make sure that they have done that. But they, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, you know, because we, we provided the, we provided the draft calendars back before Christmas I didn't ask for them to specifically respond back to me with any comments unless they felt like they needed to. And no one has responded back to me with any any concerns or questions. Okay, so what I'm understanding is we're trying to figure out a ball game that we don't know who we're playing. <laughs> so this is all pretty much speculation at this time. At this point, and really the, has no... It's right no, now, it's right, yeah, right yeah, now we're, we're building a calendar on old law because the law that we have right now will expire on June 30, so we are set to go back to the old law. But with COVID and the implementation of remote learning, it is everybody's anticipation that when the General Assembly comes back to session that there will be changes in calendar law and we will have to reconvene and modify our calendar just like we did this school year when we were from the curve. So at this point, it's just a lot of work. It's ceremonial. Yes. Is what I would say. So, it's ceremonial. I don't so, like ceremonial. Yeah. So, <laughs> so basically, August 17th or August 16th is when we start because that is the earliest date by law that we can start. Um, the, majority, the majority does believe that holidays should be scheduled as they occur. The majority does believe uh, that we should continue with a week long spring break at Easter and that we need two weeks at Christmas. 
Okay, yeah. now let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. At the time when, before we meet with this again, mm -hmm. can we make sure that we do have input from like the schools and the administrators and okay. we well, can no, know we how have, much of the community we, we have actually seen We do seen have these. input from the school, I mean. They haven't seen these though, is what I'm saying. Or shared them here. Yeah. I, I, I can't confirm that they have shared them out. I right. know that the committee was sent right. a draft copy uh, back in December, but I, at that time, it's, it's like, you know, here it is. And the board's in control of the time. We can, yeah. we can take these two drafts. Tomorrow we're having our administrator's meeting. We can say these are the two drafts, take them back, have discussions with your school permit teams, mm -hmm. your staff, put them in workrooms, and collect feedback, direct any feedback or questions or concerns to the principal, and bring them back mm -hmm. yeah. to Jeffrey James, and that would be a good way to capture some feedback. I'd like for the committee to do the... The, the groundwork for it instead of the administrator. Mm -hmm. I think that goes over better because I think they get better information back yeah. Yeah. <coughs> from, from there. Now, I, I can certainly resend the drafts to the committee and just I mean, ask, and ask yeah. specifically for comment. Like I said, we did send that to them, but it was sent to them, it was sent to them with the questionnaire. It was basically the draft hasn't changed since the committee or, or since the survey because everything that was in the survey is what I anticipated because it's what has been the responses ever since I've been working with the calendar. So nothing has really changed from when we sent the original draft said here's a draft, here's the questions that we need to look at to make sure that the draft aligns with the wishes of the community and the staff. And so as I said, the only thing that did not, that does not line up is Christmas. Because the majority, if you look at the survey, the majority say that Christmas break should begin December 20. The problem with beginning the break on December 20th is we have two days that we can't cover. Because we're using five days of vacation at spring break. We're using one day of vacation at Thanksgiving that only leaves us four vacation days to cover 10. So we have four vacation days, four holidays, that's eight total days. So there's two days that we're short. And so we don't have an option unless what we wanna say is, well, we can start Christmas vacation on December 20th and the 20th and the 21st would be optional work days. Mm -hmm. Students would be out of school mm -hmm. and staff would have the option to take the day off if they have enough vacation leave to cover it. Or you could do that on the 24th of November as well. And give yourself yes, an you, could, you could make the day before Thanksgiving. You could do that like we did this year, and then you'd only have one optional day. But that's the only thing that within the, the structure of the survey that we run able to fulfill, and it's simply because the days aren't available. Okay, now um, the other, a thing Miss Edwards had asked about a 180 day calendar and under the current law or the law that will be under that is permissible because the law says it's 185 days or 1025 hours and with a six hour instructional day we would meet the 1025 mark on May 30th which is well before the 180th day so you could May 30th, May 13th, May 13th, I'm sorry, oh. May 13th, uh, May 13th, if, if we did a 6.25 hour instructional day, it would be May 5th. So I, I just went with the six hour because I don't think we would go under a six hour day. And, um, you know, so yes, we could do 180 days out the gate because we have every anticipation of meeting 1,025 hours. In five so, days. You have to go five days. That's five? just this year. That's not that's in, that's not in year, the law neck okay. at this time. That's confused to me. That's yeah, good. at this time. So so we could do 185. We could do 180 at this present moment. But as Dr. Brigman has said, we do anticipate some changes. And so this will be a work in progress. What we'd like to do is at least get something out there so that people can begin planning. But I think at the same token, we would also need to put a caveat on there that says it, you know, could change due to changes in the law. Approved as of January. If we're going back to the old law, are we going back to the old 
We are not going back to the old definition of year-round school. Yes, I think we should. That that has been permanently changed. That was that was a permanent change. Yes. Okay. The year-round uh, issue was permanently changed. Okay. So, so as it stands now, remote days are not an option in next year's calendar, which I think will change. Um, the 185 days or 1,025 is their requirement. I think that will stay the same. I will not speculate if they'll want us to do the plus five. That I, I, I just don't know. You know, anything's possible at this point. So, well, so, yeah. so, so start date's not going to change right now. Right. For either calendar. Right. Uh, but when we were here last, like last month, I wasn't locked here, but. Uh, <laughs> You had two hundred day, five day calendars. Mm -hmm. Now you have one. So and, and the difference was Christmas. The the so, difference at Christmas was uh, going through the twenty second. Okay. And uh, so this using was the one, one less most. using one less day of leave. But after getting all of the results back on the survey, it was evident that the 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 majority would prefer to start. The Christmas break earlier, so I, I pulled that draft off because it was going against the wishes of the committee. You know, so the basic. I, oh, sorry. Does that make sense? Yes. That, that's why we pulled that draft so back. So basically, the only difference is the number of days, 80, 180 or 185. That's the only difference between the two. One is 185 days, the other is 180, because everything else falls in line based on the present or what the law says we must do in the coming year. So could we move one of these yellow days over here to Christmas? You very well could, yes. So that would be your only option at this point if you wanted to make December tw Christmas break start December 20th. So you could take some of these days that are in June mm -hmm. over. You could. Which which may mean that you, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to add a little twist to this too. Summer planning has started for summer, and summer, give me the term, summer school, not summer schools. Summer, uh, the, uh, Summer reading camps. Summer reading camps. And we are anticipating a drop of funding to support some intensive summer intervention camps, especially targeting literacy. And um, as we get on into planning those, it would be helpful for the leadership team to know start dates for school and start planning backwards uh, to address employee contracts. And well, it's summer. not going to change. It's the 16th. It shouldn't change. That's right. Uh, are we looking at trying to do in-person summer camps? That's what we're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Intensive intervention. Yes, and we're talking a substantial amount of money that is tentatively earmarked to come to our district. So planning will need to start for those summer camps. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I say that so when we do approve the calendar, that we can start intense planning mm -hmm. up to that first week of school. I'd, I'd like to consider tabling this without action until we, you know, the general assembly gets in, in our office and because I'll give one more month because we're just now being sworn in. I'd agree with that and saying that we will plan on beginning August 16 mm -hmm. to right. keep any, yeah. any of that planning from not moving forward. The only thing I would I would look at is if you're going to go with the 180 day calendar, is possibly moving some of those days at the very end back over here toward Christmas. And, and yeah. I, I would be in favor of that yeah. myself. And and going with the 180 80 day calendar gives you that flexibility. Exactly. The 185 day would be difficult because you only have right. two, so That's you'd be I'm using saying. them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would have really no option for snow days other than exactly. You know, yeah. So, uh, well, the hours are not yeah, hours. I mean, you just be throwing, throwing the day away. Yeah. Okay. The, the one thing Thank I would, you. you know, if we table, which I'm, I'm in favor of that as well, because I think the more information we can get and, and insight from the General Assembly as they come in would benefit us. But would it be beneficial to post these as drafts not approved? And that way, even I know that I can get them back into the hands of the committee.
which I will do. I'll send it back out to the committee and say, I'll, I'll give them an update as to where we are. But if we posted them on our website as of calendars up for consideration, not official, then you might get a little bit more, you know, public input. Well, can, can you put one with, uh, I'm in agreement with Jane on that, for it to move some of those days over to Christmas. I mean, and I can sort of, I can make that change on the 100 day, 180 day version. Yeah. Um, with I think that gets, that gets more, that gets your committee's request mm -hmm. also. Right. We, so we, we can, I can send that back up. Day, move two of those optional work days at the end over to the 20th and the 21st of Possibly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what does that but do for what student it would do, day? Because you've got those do, as student days. What it would so. do is it would make the if you look at your 180 day yeah. version, what that would do is that would make the last day of school May 27th. Yeah. Because we'll be adding mm -hmm. two, taking two student days away from first semester and moving it into second, and the 20th and the 21st would be optional work days. Yeah. It's the advantage the of instructional days first semester. Yes, first semester, though, is pretty continu there's pretty, pretty much continuity. continuity yes, and then, so you really need more days in second great. semester because you have to review mm -hmm. it on a, in a typical year. Yeah. And that's it, would, like, it would put 84 instructional days first semester, which we have consistently ran mm -hmm. about, you know, between 80 and 84. And I know when, when I was in accountability and, and Miss Edwards was the principal for high school, that's kind of where we fell. Yeah. Uh, and we tested and, and you know, and with the continuity, uh, it didn't affect our accountability. Second mm -hmm. semester just always got blown away because of the uh, Christmas tree effect that occurs in January, February, and March. Because yeah. it gets really lit up and it's colored. So, um, but yeah, I, I can I can certainly make those changes, those adjustments. I can get the information back out to the committee. But I'll just you know as as a request, could we go ahead and rather than hold this just to the committee, go ahead and, and that would actually I could put it out there and, and let the committee know that the information is on the website, and that would actually also give the committee an opportunity. Well, I don't have a copy of it with me, but if you go to the school's website, there's a link, and you can look at it. That might be a good way to get it out there in this COVID environment mm -hmm. when we can't have uh, town halls and faculty meetings. So actually what we'd be giving up if, if we went to the 180 and moved those days is we'd have to decide, do we, would we rather have two full weeks at Christmas or do we want to be out two, day, two or three days earlier in May? So. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think most people will choose Christmas. Yeah. yeah, they're usually ready for a break then and two. Yeah. You don't want to run too far into June if you're going to do your summer camps because it just makes your summer shorter for all those kids mm -hmm. uh, and teachers. Right. Yeah. And there's a question about attendance I have in December with the Monday and a half day Tuesday. Yeah, yes. I think attendance yes. would get, yeah. get yeah. hard. I'm not sure those would be effective days unless you close on those days. And yes. <laughs> yeah, then you deal with a lot of makeups yeah. in January. Yeah, exactly. And always, if you can end on a Friday, yeah. And you know, get that extra weekend in there. I mean, that just mm -hmm. just really. I, I will make those, I'll make those adjustments. I will send that to you as, as an email uh, early in the morning. And, um, and then if you see anything that I've overlooked from tonight's discussion, please let me know. And I'll wait uh, until Thursday or Friday to uh, then publish it out to the committee. Uh, and ask for, uh, you know, for them to, to work it. And then we'll know a little bit more from the General Assembly before we get back into our February meeting. If that's... Uh, thank you. I think that's good. Thank you. Very much. Nice. Sounds good. Right. Yeah. Thank, Thanks. You. Thanks. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess, uh, let's see. The board will meet in closed session for the purpose of discussing information that is privileged, confidential, or not a public record. Could I have motion a motion to move from closed uh, from open to closed session, please? I so move we move into closed session. Thank you, Jane. Second. I'll second that. Thank you, Kathy. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. well, thank you. Thank you all for joining us, joining us online, and again, happy new year to everybody. We're looking forward to twenty twenty one. Yes.